Paint me excited. Today, Photoshop Beta brings AI into your daily workflow. Imagine a Content Aware fill that can sample from not one image, not two, but millions. Here's how it works. Here I am inside Photoshop Beta, which these days allows you to tie directly into the same technology associated with Adobe Firefly. And that assumes Photoshop Beta 24.6 or later. And so I'm looking at a photograph that I captured a few years ago in Sri Lanka. In case you're curious, this, this becomes important. This is a 15 foot 12th century statue known as the Seated Buddha which is carved into solid granite along with three other Buddhas at this place called Galvahara. And the reason this is important is because it's very possible that this is the kind of image that is associated with Firefly's training. Firefly might know it, in other words, which could come in really handy. Now, I'm mostly pleased with the composition. There's a lot of, you know, granite going on on the right-hand side. I hate the sky. It's blown out. Foliage is kind of ratty, and then the scaffolding has got to go. It's really a protective awning, but still, I don't want it. Now, I'm going to kind of roll through a few ways we might approach an image like this, and, and some of you might feel like, get on with it, for golly's sake. You know, get get to the point. And you, you can skip ahead if you want to do that, but I want to set the stage here because there's different varieties of AI in Photoshop. And so what I'm going to do is just scroll over a little bit and I'll go up to the edit menu and choose sky replacement. Why is it not replace sky verb noun like define pattern? Don't know. Two nouns in a row, but still let's choose it. And what it does is it automatically basically replaces the sky. I guess that makes sense. You choose the sky over here inside the dialog box, and then you can drag the sky around and notice that Photoshop automatically determines where the sky is, which is all very well and good, except that it misses the foliage and the scaffolding, which are the parts that are driving me nuts. You know, it's great that I'm getting rid of a blown sky. And you have all these controls that you, you can play around with. This is a variety of AI of sorts. Automation anyway. It's not really today's AI. This is the kind of thing that Adobe has called over time Sensei. And Sensei is nothing, by the way. It's just, it's just automation of all forms. For example, I'll just go ahead and cancel out of here. What I mean is there's no tie that binds. Another Sensei, Sensei apparently is object selection, which bears no resemblance whatsoever versus generative AI, imaging AI that we have with Firefly. I just want to make sure you hold the two in opposition in your mind. So that's one option. Another is to just select this guy region by dragging across it, by marqueeing it with the object selection tool. Works out beautifully, as you can see right here. I'm going to press the M key to switch back to the marquee tool so we're not seeing that flashing on screen. And then you would be, I think this is the hopeful stuff that we've had going in the past is that you could go to the edit menu and choose content aware fill and it would just be kind of magical. It would just know how to better this area of the image. Now, even though it's very powerful, as I discussed a few months ago now, it can't handle this it, because it doesn't know. It doesn't recognize this as being sky. It can't use anything inside the selection to fill the selection. And so what it has to do is duplicate stuff that's found outside the selection in various random ways. I'm sure there's a lot of intelligence going on in the background here, but it does end up repeating details as we're seeing. And that would be great. Maybe it's not great. It's pretty bad. If you wanted to re replace this guy with more carved granite, Obviously, that's not what I want to do. As I say, I discussed it months ago in detail. I'm going to cancel out. And in 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 contrast to uh, content that we're Phil these days, we now happily, I'm just going to scroll over a little bit, we have this guy generate fill. Now, what we're looking at, by the way, is the contextual uh, taskbar, which I don't know how people are going to really react to this one because it's kind of another options bar that does different stuff. It has sort of common stuff that you, common operations that you might want to apply. And it kind of hops around the screen in order to stay out of your way. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, 
let's say you're not seeing it. You can just click generate, uh, generative fill and work from there. Or if you're not finding it, you can go to the edit menu and choose generative fill. I should highlight everything could change by the time you watch this. This probably won't. It's in a good location it's with the other fill commands. But anyway, notice it brings up a dialog box of sorts. Doesn't look like a dialog box, but it is. And I'll just go ahead and paste in a prompt and click generate. Now I want you to know Tis that it the prompt is spectacular evening sunset sky with dramatic photographic clouds. Whether that makes a lot of sense in the context of this image, I don't know, but I am telling it what it is I'm looking for. And then you can see I get three different variations. And so you can just click on a variation in order to see it here inside the image window. And they're going to vary in terms of how they look. You know, none of these look all that great necessarily. Actually, the first one looks okay, I guess. Now, let's say you don't like one of these guys. You can just go ahead and close it by clicking on the X. Don't do it. Don't do it here inside of the generative fill in quote fingers dialog box because there's not a lot of dialog going on here. But still, don't because that's unrecoverable. You can't get it back. You can't undo anything you do here. So I would click OK, even though here it doesn't look like it's a button. But click OK, and you will see those same variations show up inside the properties panel. If you're not seeing the properties panel on screen, go to the window menu and choose properties. Anyway, now... If I was to click on one of these guys, notice, let's say I'll click on this guy and then I'll close it. And then it dawns on me, wait a sec, why did I close the good one? These other ones are terrible. Well, you can undo by going up to the image menu. Notice your first undo is going to be, my first undo is going to be switching between those last two variations there. Then I can choose undo again, oop, right there, undo delete variation. Or, of course, Control or Command C, and that's going to bring that variation back. And it's all saved, by the way, along with the prompt, we'll see that in a second, to this special kind of layer that we now have here that's a generative layer. You can see that hint right there. And its thumbnail uh, sports a tiny little sort of sparky poo, little sparks, that is, on top of a diamond, I guess, and that indicates a generative item inside the software. And I want you to see real fast here that there is another generative control at work at this point in time. If you click and hold on the healing brush, you'll see that there's this new remove tool that also has a couple of sparkles. And that is something, by the way, in case you're interested in that, allows you to brush in AI stuff into an image. And I do discuss that, by the way, at my Patreon which is patreon.com slash deke now. In case you're interested, I go into detail about it. All right, I'm going to switch back to the marquee just so that we have a neutral vantage point here. Now, notice my prompt. Why does it say evening sunset? That, 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 that's in opposition to the image itself, which I did not capture in the evening, nor was there a sunset. So I'll just get rid of that. So bad prompts will give you bad results. And then I'll just click generative again. Now, this is going to take a moment or two in part because this is a relatively high resolution image. It's 10 and a half megapixels, which doesn't sound that high res, but by AI standards, it is. It's a lot to work with. All right, now notice that I can once again switch between these different variations. Did I mention that generative fill requires an active internet connection? Well, it does. But there's another variety of AI-enabled healing technology that doesn't, and that's the Remove tool, which lets you take a photograph like this, for real, and turn it into this. I know, right? To learn all about it, join my Patreon at patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to generative fill. All right, now I mentioned that this is an historical location, Galvahara. And it might help. Maybe it'll help Firefly give me better results here if it knows that's what I'm looking at. So I'm just going to paste in a new prompt. Galvahara, seated Buddha, because there's only one. Well, there's two that are seated, but one's really dinky. But there's only one big seated Buddha and distant trees that I wanted to generate. So I'll click generate it again. Another reason we have a progress bar is because this is all happening remotely on remote GPUs as opposed to most of the work being done either on your CPU or your local GPU, for what it's worth. So there's a ton of processing that's going on. Now notice that it did take 
Galvahara seriously. That has somehow worked into the image because it Photoshop has built up the wall, as you can see there, the granite wall. And so notice that it kind of varies in terms of its height. You're going to get different effects every time. You're going to be working with a different image. But notice in my case, we've got a tree growing out of the granite right there. And then we have this whatever's going on right there at that location. But we also have a lot more rock at work there. All right, I'm going to try a different prompt, something much more detailed this time, and I'm going to kind of switch emphasis. So spectacular morning light coming through deciduous trees. Let's get it started. Lush forest and then Galvahara seated Buddha at the very end so that it doesn't take necessarily all the precedent in the world. And a moment later, we will see this wall come down because it can't be this tall. That's part of my problem with it. It, it, it looks like maybe this is a this is a mistake, but notice if I turn the layer off for a moment, that's where the original wall is. And so we're taking a bite out of this little area right here. Uh, the top of this column and you could you know work on the mask if you wanted to there is a layer mask sitting right there by the way that you can adjust and you you can see you got tons of image going on as well and so even if you turn the the mask off it's not going to make that much different a difference that is at this point but um and that's because you have told photoshop what to replace and what not to replace what to keep if you had made a bigger selection that included the Buddha, I went ahead and turned that layer mask back on, that included the Buddha, you would have replaced the Buddha's face and so forth. Anyway, I have different, notice here in the properties panel, I'm not seeing any of the properties associated with this generative layer. So I'll click on its thumbnail to bring all this stuff back so that I can switch between these states. Be careful you don't close a state or a variation that is. Uh, without meaning to, of course. And I just want you to see that they're all here. Everything that I've done in front of you in this video is available along with their original prompts. So if I switch back to the first one, there's spectacular evening sunset sky with dramatic photographic clouds and so forth. And you can also switch between them down here in the, now it's down here, the contextual taskbar. So you can switch between those guys. By the way, if you want to get rid of the taskbar, you can click on the three dots and choose hide taskbar. You can always bring it back from the window menu. You can, th if you want to help out Adobe, up to you. You can vote up the results here. You can vote them down, and you can question them. You can flag the uh, what you're what you're getting in case you think it's you know despicable. Then you can highlight what kind of violence, gory trees are going on, that kind of thing. Anyway, I'll cancel out. I'm not seeing any problems necessarily, other than problems of quality. And you know, if I wanted to run this again, I could. I don't want to waste a lot of time on that. What I want you to see, this is very important, is that this is this is a very special kind of layer. We've already seen that. It contains all kinds of different variations, whatever variations you keep. That is going to add to the file size on disk. By the way, it's going to balloon the file size. It's very, very quickly. You can end up with gigabyte files. It's It's not hard at all. But I want you to see something else. Let's say I think, you know, I want to kind of miss this up a little bit. Maybe raise the gamma. Then I'll go up to the image menu and choose adjustments and choose levels. You might say, Deke, that's a static adjustment. Why in the world would you do that? You're going to upset the, the very nature of this layer. You can change all the pixels. No, I'm not. I'll just go ahead and choose levels. Notice we're not seeing anything over here in the layers panel quite yet. No additional items, but I'll just go ahead and click in that gamma value and take it up a couple of clicks to 1.2 and click OK. And notice I have now added a smart filter. So generative layers are a kind, a special variety of smart objects inside Photoshop. Hence, the, the fact that they can accommodate multiple variations and the fact that they balloon the size of your files. But what that means is I could double click on levels in order to take that gamma value up even more if I was so inclined. All right, now I know I've been waxing on for a while here, but I want to zoom in on this detail. Let's say I want to heal this wound. Well, that's the kind of thing you could try to pull off with the healing brush, of course, spot healing or otherwise. But what I'm going to do is grab the lasso tool right here 
And I'm just going to go ahead and select this region. Actually, that's kind of a big selection, isn't it? I'll take its size down a little bit. I do want kind of a generalized selection so that I select a little bit too much. And I might even shift drag around this kind of scraped away stuff right here. And now because you're starting with a new selection outline, you will create a new generative fill layer. And I'm going to do that just by clicking on generative fill here in the taskbar. And then you can enter a prompt if you want to or not. In this case, this isn't really worth it. I wouldn't know really what to enter, right? Sort of fabric, texture, robe, um, you know, granite, that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm just going to click generate. I'm just going to let it work from the image. The progress bar, as you can see, is going faster because it has a smaller detail to work with. We're generating a new layer, as you can see over here in the layers panel, and it didn't work. And you may end up having that problem where it just refuses to work. That message that we saw, that orange message, indicates that I've somehow violated their decency rules, which of course can't possibly be true. So I'll just change the selection a little bit and click generate again. This will eventually work, or of course my name is Mud. But you know, we'll 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 edit out the, the embarrassing parts, which continue. All right, but this is helpful. Notice that the generate button is dimmed. Oh, it's not really. But I mean, if it continues to be dimmed, then you could click generate over here in the properties panel because it's still aware that it's trying to make a generative layer after generative layer. So, you know, I want to highlight at this point in time that this is a beta product and its behavior is going to change over time, I would imagine. Anyway, look, this isn't unusual that it just goes ahead and creates a black spot. In which case, just close that one. That variation is no good. And then look at that variation right there. I'm going to press Control D, Command D on the Mac, so we don't have that selection outline. And then I'll try a different variation right there. And that way you can choose which one you like. They are totally non-destructive, of course, and you can switch them out. And it actually ends up looking pretty darn good. And then I don't need this generative layer because it's empty. So I'll just go ahead and select it and press the backspace key in order to get rid of it. And that is at least a bunch of different ways. I was going to say one diff one particular way, but no, it's many, many different ways to use the Firefly inspired generative fill here inside Photoshop beta 24.6 and moving forward. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And don't forget about the all-new Remove tool, which I explore at patreon.com slash deeknow. And then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.